Father, we thank you for this amazing spirit of praise and worship. We vow to give you all the glory. We vow to give you all the praise as you give us the spirit of praise. By faith, we open up our hearts and we find praise is there in our tongue because it's in our heart already. The spirit of praise, a life of praise and worship unto the Lord of Lords. Let's worship the triune God together, thanking the Father for His love and mercy and goodness, His holiness. Oh, Father, we stand before You amazed at Your great power, at Your glory, at Your mighty presence amongst us. Lord Jesus Christ, we stand in awe of You, praising and worshiping You, declaring Your Lordship over this service and over our lives, not ashamed to proclaim and declare, Jesus Christ is my Savior, my Lord, my Redeemer, the absolute Lord of my life. We lift up the name of Jesus. And at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Holy Spirit, we stand in amazement before you as you move in us and through us and upon us as congregation in your gifts, in your power, in your conviction first and above all convict us guide us empower us enable us inspire us encourage us teach us great teacher of the scriptures we lift up the one triune God in reverence, awe, and godly fear. We worship the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we give you all praise, adoration, and worship due unto you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. From the Gospel of Mark. In chapter 8, please. Mark 8. And I'm going to be reading verse 34. Let's start from 34 and then we'll move on. This great scripture that became a rhema to all of us, I believe, so far. 8.34 And when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after him, after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. We say amen, amen. to the word of God. You may be seated. presence of the Lord is so great, great amongst us, great upon us. And the, the instructions of the Lord is so clear. I mean, even a little 
child can understand this. He called the Lord Jesus, his disciples, his disciples. I'm not a visitor in the house of God. I'm not a visitor in the faith in Jesus Christ. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. And in Antioch first, the disciples were called Messianic Jews, Orthodox, Catholic, or Christians. In Antioch, the disciples were called Christians. Not vice versa. That's a great huge difference. Not the Christians were called disciples, but the disciples were called Christians. Even the disciples had to meet another prerequisite in order to be called Christians. You see, you don't get a name a Christian and you're immediately a Christian. You must be a disciple, a disciplined person. He who doesn't receive correction will suddenly be destroyed. The first thing that characterizes a Christian is discipleship. He called his disciples closer to him. And he said unto them, Whosoever amongst you will come after me. Oh, you need to build your self-esteem. What a devilish, what a satanic teaching is being preached from pulpits, pulpits all over the earth today. The greatest damage done to Christendom is the world in the church. Worldliness in the church. The false grace teaching. Oh, you have a low self-esteem. I have zero self-esteem. Relax. Don't rebel. We are not against esteem. We are against self. He who comes after me must deny himself. So, Jesus Christ our Lord is calling us unto denying ourselves. Not build, building ourselves. What a satanic teaching. And yet, believers clap their hands, rejoice, say hallelujah, when they tell them how to build their self-esteem. How easily supposedly Christians are led astray because once you distance yourself from the discipline of the word of God directly to you into your life, you are a candidate for deception. And I don't want deception in my life. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. Moreover, not just a disciple, I'm somebody who does the first thing Jesus, the Lord, asks his disciples, namely, to deny myself. I believe in self-denial. There is no greater love no greater love other than to lay your life down for your friends. How can you put your life down if you have such a huge self-esteem? Self has to die so that you can put your life down for those who love. You, for those who you love. 
A husband must be ready to lay his life down for his wife. A father must be in a place to lay down his life for his children. If needs to be, if, if needs, if, if it needs to be so, and a Christian must be ready to lay his life down for the sake of the gospel. How can I lay my life down if I don't deny myself? You see that? Number two, take up his cross. Number three, follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, listen to what the Lord is saying right here. What a powerful statement. He, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. You want to find your life? Lose it. That's an oxymoron because we know that uh, you must save money. You must save your life. You must save and protect everything you have. And yet the Lord Jesus says, he who wants to save his life, he will lose it. He who loses his life shall find it. I lost my life in the world. Therefore, nothing of this world can attract me. I'm dead to this world and the world is dead to me. How? It's crucified to me and I'm crucified to the world. And as in Proverbs, it says in Proverbs that we are an abomination to the world. And the world is an abomination to us. Praise the Lord. For what shall it profit a man? Listen every man, woman, boy, girl. Listen to this. Yes, we believe in two genders. The ones God gives. As a post uh, we posted uh, says it's two boys. And one says to another, I heard that there are 56 genders increasing. 56 genders in Canada. Canada. Teachers are trying to convince little boys and girls that there are more genders and there are no boys or girls, but many genders. And a little girl, six years old, was so much overwhelmed by what the teacher said that she fell into depression. And now the parents are suing the government and the uh, uh, Ministry of Education uh, for that reason. But I don't think that we'll get anywhere because everything in Canada now is liberal. Leftist and liberal. Left, socialist. Prime Minister, I'm not talking politics, I'm talking the Bible. Socialism is meant to destroy Christianity. Didn't you know that? Read the Communist Manifesto. Ed educate yourselves. You don't need to get into all these. I got into all these and I'm teaching you. You don't need to get into that. Marx and Engels were against Christianity. That was their first cause. See what's going on in China. See what's going on in every country. Socialism takes over. Socialism breeds liberalism. And so uh, society is, is being led to perdition. Now you say, don't talk about these things because you may end up in prison. Listen to me. If we shut our mouths now, we must open it and give an answer to the Lord. For we held back and we didn't take a stand. In this church, we take a stand. 
Don't think that I'm a giant of faith or a giant of a... No, 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 no. I'm a coward as you are. Excuse me if you're not a coward. Apart from Christ, we are cowards. In Christ, there is no fear here because perfect love casts out all fear. You hate somebody? No, we love boys and girls. That's why we hate this thing that is coming to Cyprus. And it's not the government that will teach you, not the schools that will teach you. Thank God for our Christian school and Christian teachers. Just one school in Cyprus. But education, public education, that's where it's led, even private. But we are standing from the pulpits to declare the, 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 the truth of the Lord. We love the truth. We hate what God hates. Don't say you love everything. I love everything, even the devil. No, no, we hate devil. We hate sin. We hate whatever God hates. Amen. Amen. For what, what shall save if, if, we, if we don't speak for the unborn? We will give an account to the Lord. Because in his word, he says, we should open our mouths for those who cannot open theirs. And there is no greater example than babies in their mother's womb. That babies, unborn babies, they get the DNA. They say, listen to this, they say that once the, the, the heartbeat is, um, uh, is detected, it's a life. What is before that? If it's going to, if, if, if the baby's heart is going to beat, guess what it is, what the baby is before the three weeks of just gestation. It's a, it's a baby. It's a, it's a life given by God. Amen? Amen. I'm giving you the latest, the latest, the latest. Now, uh, the third week, baby's heart is baby's heartbeat is detected we heard from number one he's a chiropractor and functional medicine doctor and he's very famous you must uh, uh, the feet to speak to him to get him by phone one hour thousand dollars only but he's so famous and uh, he said that the the, the the nerve system, the neurons and nerves and the neurological system starts developing at the eighth day. But everybody, every scientist, all of those that don't support life at conception, close their eyes and they want to hide because every doctor knows and every scientist knows that at the time of conception, DNA is right there. And the baby's gender has been decided by the father of the spirits. But it's man that uh, is man, humankind, men and women that are reproducing. In the physical, God gives the spirit. He is the father of the spirit. And I, I referred to you the other day about doctor's observation that couldn't give an explanation for. They were shocked when... At the time of conception, in their observation in the laboratory, they searched and they saw it caught a light into what they had as a three, four dimensional sonogram or something like that. A strange light came as soon as uh, the, the con conception took place. A light. 
I'm, I, we, listen, I don't need anybody to observe that the light is coming that cannot be explained. I know that my God lives. He is the, the he, in Hebrew, the, 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 the expression, he who means God is life. God is life. God is the life. So he's the father of the spirits. He gives life. And I believe the word of God. So we take a stand for the unborn. We take a stand against abnormality. So the two little boys that I refer to you in this illustration. One is talking to another. I heard that there are 56 genders. And the other boy is saying to the, the boy that said that. He, he, he says, no, there are two genders and 54 mental disorders. That's hate speech. No, that's love speech. Yes, we hate what they're trying to do. It's a mental disorder. Anybody who thinks something about himself who is not, is uh, being called by psychiatrists. In He has psychosis or suffers from schizophrenia syndrome. So the phrase in the English proverb that says the lunatics took over the asylum, that's the situation in the world today. Brothers and sisters, it's Sodom and Gomorrah plus. Jesus is coming. My Redeemer is coming. We take a stand and we call evil. Evil, good, good, boys, boys, girls, girls, men, 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 men. No, 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 just men. Women, don't help me with the amens now. Men, men. Women, women. Apolio, men. What happened to you, men? Men, men, amen. Amen. Women, women. (laughs) Then everybody insists a man should preach the word. Yes, a man should be the pastor. But a woman covered and blessed by her husband is a blessing to have my wife anointed servant of the lord a handmaid of the lord to minister to you in the next sermon but for now minority rules (laughs) praise the lord god rules Amen. amen men be men women be women women be feminine men be masculine Men, take authority in your house. Take authority in the church. Take authority in life. Speak out the truth. Take a stand for the truth. Whosoever, what what shall it profit a man? If If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Put a value on your soul. Men and women. Children, boys and girls, put a value to your soul. What shall it profit a man? I have other things to do. Let other things aside. I don't have time. If you go to the hospital, you will have much time. Aren't you glad you're not in the hospital? Your leg tied on because it's broken. None of his bones shall be broken. None. No harm shall ever happen to the righteous. None. But these bones are filled with fire. And when I said to not say anything, it boiled in me and I couldn't but talk. 
but speak, but preach and proclaim and decree the word of God. Let's decree the word of God. Let's put things aside because things put us aside. Let's kill all other priorities before they kill us and kill the first priority, which should be the Lord in our lives. That He might in all things be preeminent. Prodevon. Colossians 1.18 That He might be preeminent. That He might have preeminence in, my, in our lives. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world? And lose his own soul. Or what shall verse 37. Mark 8 37. Or, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul. What shall a man give an exchange for his soul. Put a value to your soul. Verse 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me. And my of my words. In this adulterous and sinful generation. Adulterous. Well. We must talk love. Well, Jesus, the greatest example of love, says, O ye vipers, O ye generation of adulterers, the generation, sinful generation, we are ashamed to say we go to this church. We are ashamed to say we are Christians. No, 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 no. We are not ashamed for the Lord and His church, His word and His people. My family, my spiritual family. It's time you love me and it's time I love you as my family. Because we're going to be together forever. If you're really somebody who means business for the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Friday we're going to have a baptism, baptismal service and uh, somebody wants to make known to everybody before God, before men that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh, when he cometh in the glory of his Father and his holy angels. Modern versions skip the holy and have angels. Still is the word of God if it's New King James Version. No. Still it's the word of God if it's the New American Standard. No. Because one word missing makes it not the word of God. Amen. Amen. So is the, is the expression holy angels true? It is. Holy prophets? Yes. How about holy God? How about holy spirit? When they remove just the holy and they uh, just leave spirit, what is it? Is it the word of God? No, you're not holding in your hands. Oh, thank God I, I started doing something I'm going to explain to you uh, in, maybe in a couple of weeks that it reaches out to the body of Christ with the truth of the gospel, a ministry to the nations, a ministry to the pastors and, and workers and uh, proclaiming the truth. So... The Lord Jesus is coming when He cometh in the glory of His Father and with holy angels. That's a reference to the rapture. You want a proof that this is a proof for the rapture? This is a reference to the rapture? Why? Because in his second coming, he will not only come with his holy angels. Revelation 19, we do that on Wednesdays. Revelation 19, 11 through 16. Said that many times, what's what's the imagery there? He is coming back with his holy angels and his holy people. So here the Lord cometh. In the glory of his father and his and with his holy angels. So here 
He is coming with much glory and much power with His holy angels for His church. That's the rapture of the church. Praise the Lord. Proof number one that we live in the last days. We look at Israel, number one. We look at church, number two. We look at society, number three. Israel, we said, is an ex in an explosive state. And we know now that Israel is doing drills, uh, military drills, uh, Navy, and um, uh, Air Force, and IDF. Uh, and uh, they do a drill that... Uh, covers all fronts, northern front and southern front and everywhere. They are surrounded. And we know that the war of Psalms 83, the inner ring of the nations, the Muslim nations, are going to attack Israel and God will give victory to Israel. Shalom, Jerusalem. Shalom, Israel. Praise the Lord. We take a stand for Israel. Those who oppose and resist Israel oppose and resist their own blessing. I was in a pharmacy store. In the States it's called drug store. It doesn't sell drug, it sells medicine, but it's called a drug store. When I went to the States, the United States... And we saw drugstore, drugstore. I said, it's so free here. They sell drugs everywhere. No, that's the pharmacy. Anyway, I was there. And I know the pharmacist was an um, anti-Israel. Whom I evangelized many times. And I gave him my book on Israel in, in Greek. When I had it done, I gave it to him. So you see, I take a stand for Israel. And he was, I think he was extreme right. But anyway, I gave him the book and um, uh, I, then I started talking to him openly about Israel, taking a stand. Now he talks for Israel. And even yesterday, he said, one of his customers says, oh, if it's something from the Hebrews, Jews, I don't want it. And then the pharma, uh, the, uh, and then I said, well, everybody, and uh, there were other customers, and there was the staff of the uh, staff there of the the staff of the pharmacy store, and I said, anybody who doesn't bless Israel is accursed, and everybody who blesses Israel is blessed. The, this is the verse. Don't give them your opinion. Give them the word of God. I'm not ashamed, and I was shocked. I was shocked. Shocked, shocked, shocked. When I started speaking in favor for Israel, and somebody in the ministry, I was shocked. When I said, well, if they don't bless Israel, they will not, they will not be blessed. And this person said, no, if you bless anyone, you're blessed. If you bless Great Britain, you're blessed. No, no, I said, no, 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 no. no. If you bless Israel, there's a verse. Give me a verse. Shocked, brothers and sisters. Shocked. I'm shocked when I go abroad and I'm cornered by somebody who is against Israel. Somebody who is against the presence of God. Somebody who is liberal, and I, I think they are conservative, yet they are liberal. Uh, they, they appear to us as being for true grace, and they preach false grace. Brothers and sisters, there is much hypocrisy in the house of God. That's why judgment starteth, starts, begins from my house, says the Lord. We bless Israel. This is the official doctrine of the apostolic church of Jesus Christ. This is the flag of Israel right, right there. We don't take it if somebody comes hide it. They told me, don't preach anything. Don't say anything about Israel. Because you have some uh, 
people who don't like Israel. I said we had Iranians in our church, Syrians, Egyptians, and we had Arabs, and we preached for Israel, and they loved Israel. And our church, I don't want to be cursed. We bless Israel. We take a stand for Israel. I'll pick it up next week. You know who became Catholic? Ulf Ekman, the biggest supporter of Europe, an apostle of God, an apostle of the New Testament, somebody who loved Israel, became a Catholic, and now he's been catechized. And I'll explain to you next week why do I refer by name? It's with my, I don't take any pleasure in referring to this man that I loved dearly and I still love and I'm praying that he gets out of deception. I close with this statement. We'll pick it up next week. And I'll explain to you. If it happened to Ulf Ekman and Hank Hanegraaff, he became an Orthodox. Orthodox? I mean, he is in his 70s. He's been preaching. He's been called the Bible man. Brothers and sisters, deception is creeping into the church. And we say, well, if Ulf Eichmann fell, if Hank Hanengraf fell, if he's been deceived, if that person has been deceived, I said, we say, I also might be deceived. We are subject to deception and fall. But listen to me. No, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I discovered something that I, I will close with this. The man I said, allow me to close with this statement. I mean, allow me this extra two, three minutes just to say that. For as long as the word of God is my final authority there is no chance I will be deceived no 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 I will not be, be deceived otherwise everybody will caught with a, be caught with a spirit of fear and say oh this happened to Ulf Ekman Ulf Ekman a great apostle you know why I say that by his name I'll show you his book a book that talks about officially being and coming into the Catholic Church. Brothers and sisters, I've been praying that the, uh, I was wishing that this had been a nightmare, a bad dream, but it's a reality. Why this man of God has been deceived to the point he's anti-Christian and anti-Israel? Because he left his point of reference, his final authority. If this is your final authority, you will not fall. And I will not fall. And this church is not built on a pastor, on a man. It's built on the rock of ages, the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2.20 And we are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets jesus christ being the chief cornerstone final authority zechariah 4 6 not by might not by power but by my spirit saith the lord and verse 7 it shouts it is done it is done it is done hallelujah it is done if it's not by might nor by power but by his spirit and by his word amen let us stand together let us worship the lord together hallelujah hallelujah amen feel free to praise the lord as newsmelethera να λατρεύσουμε τον Αγιον Θεό Να ευχαριστήσεις τον Κύριο Που δεν είσαι στο νοσοκομείο Που δεν έχεις πέσει Που δεν έχεις μπει 
Στην πλάνη να χαίρεσαι. Be glad you're not in the hospital. Be glad you have not been deceived. Be glad you're in the faith. Be glad Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of your faith. Be glad the Bible is your final authority. Be glad. Let's worship the Lord in spirit and in truth.